All right, and we back. Going to talk some more about the college football playoff rankings. They just released the – I'm recording this on the 13th. You'll probably see this on the 14th. Um, they released it yesterday on the 12th. And obviously Oregon comes out number one overall seed. They're the undefeated uh, Big Ten projected champion. I think they go 12-0. and I mean, this team up and down. Obviously, they do play Wisconsin at Wisconsin this weekend. It's not going to be an easy game, but a game I think you should win. And then you host Washington to end the season. Again, not necessarily an easy game, but a game I think you should win. They also do have a buy in between the Wisconsin and the Washington games. So guys can get healthy. I mean, listen, Dylan Gabriel, Tez Johnson, Evan Stewart. I mean, you have tackles, Josh Connerly and a Johnny Cornelius. And then defensively, Derek Harmon in the trenches, Jabbar Muhammad in the secondary. This is a team. The only question I have for them is can they avoid a letdown? They're my national championship favorite, at least right now. But this team looks incredible. At two, I think you have Texas, right? They're going to win the SEC. They only have one loss to Georgia. Georgia, I mean, shit, they're in, they're in jeopardy of not even making the playoffs. I have them falling completely out of the rankings. Or, you know, they're right on the outside. An upset win over Tennessee this weekend would put them right back in it. But this isn't about them. This is about Texas. Texas, I'm looking at their schedule right now. They go to Arkansas this weekend. Um, you should win that game, but it's not going to be a walkover game at all. You then go back and you have your senior night against Kentucky. You're going to roll Kentucky. You could sleepwalk through that game and still fucking annihilate the Wildcats. Your final game of the season, you have to go to Texas A&M for the first time playing them in, in like 15 years. Texas A&M is a great team. I think Texas is going to beat Texas A&M, but that is a very tough game to play. I think they finished 11-0. I mean, this offense, Kelvin Banks, is going to be a top 15 pick in the draft. You also have Quinn Ewers and Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond's a stud, defensively led by Jade Barron. To me, this is the question that I have for this team is can the defense be more consistent against great teams? Texas A&M is a perfect example of that. We're going to see a huge test then. At three, I have BYU. Now, if you're not familiar with the way the playoff work, the top four seeds are all conference champions. That doesn't necessarily mean power four that, you know, theoretically Boise State's in here because um, five conference champions make it. But Boise State, to me, isn't going to be ranked as high as BYU or number who I have at number four. BYU, I have three. I think they go undefeated. I think they're going to make the semifinals. I legitimately think this team is good enough to make the semifinals. I think they're going to win their first round playoff matchup in the quarterfinals. To me, can they avoid a letdown? Like, legitimately, I think this BYU team is incredible. They're playing with fire a lot, but they're finding ways to win. Their schedule, they play Kansas this week at home. Listen, I want Kansas to win, but I think BYU rolls the Jayhawks. You then go to Arizona State. That is not going to be an easy game. Arizona State's a good team. I think you win that, but I think it's a lot tougher. And then you host Houston on your season. You should roll Houston. So two of your three games legitimately are rollovers. So really, if you can beat Arizona State, you're going to go undefeated. At the four seat, I still have Miami. Listen, I know they suffered an embarrassing loss this week to Georgia Tech, but at the end of the day, your schedule lines up at least pretty nicely. You have a bye this week. You then host Wake Forest. You should roll Wake Forest. to get you pretty much two weeks to prepare. You go to Syracuse. Again, Syracuse is a good team, but I still think you win. I think they end 11-1. and one. I mean, listen, offensively, Xavier Ostrepo, Damian Martinez, Cam Ward, defensively led by Ruben Bain. The question to me is, can the defense be more consistent? Because that has been what's killed Miami the last month or so. If they can, they're a legit national championship contender, but if not, they're just going to make the playoffs because the ACC is weak. At the five spot, Ohio State. They legitimately might be like, you know, I don't think they're the fifth best team. I think they're probably a little higher than that. The way the bracket works, this week you, you go to Northwestern, you should roll Northwestern. Next week is going to be a huge test. You come back home and take on number five, college football planking, playoff ranking, number five, Indiana. Undefeated Indiana as well. This is going to be a huge game for Indiana, but it's also a huge game for Ohio State right? One, it, it shows, it's going to tell you no matter what, how good Indiana is. I think Ohio State wins that game, but I, listen, if Indiana loses or wins, I wouldn't be shocked. And then you host Michigan. They're a good team um, in the game, but I still think you should beat Michigan. So I think you have a rollover, a team that you should beat, and then a team that is going to be a tough battle. I think they go 11-1. I mean, listen, this team has legitimately 10 superstars. In the backfield alone, Quinton Judkins and Travion Henderson. You have a big book and Jeremiah Smith out wide. The left side of the offensive line between Donovan Jackson and Josh Simmons. You have Tyleek Williams and Jack Sawyer wrecking things on the defensive line, and then Caleb Downs and Denzel Burke in the secondary. I mean, this team is just loaded. To me, it's, can the defense be more consistent against good teams? We've seen them play up and down Indiana. They play Indiana in two weeks. That's going to be a huge test. At six, I have Penn State. Um, right now, they are 8-1. and one. They go to Purdue this week. They're going to roll Purdue. Then they, they then go to Minnesota. Minnesota's a good team. I think that Penn State beats Minnesota, but Minnesota is a good team. You can't just walk in there. And then you come back, you host Maryland for senior night. They should roll Maryland. So their schedule is pretty easy. Minnesota's the only game that's, I don't even want to say a trap game, but a game that you really have to pay attention to. Penn State, I think they go 11-1. I mean, this team, again, superstarred everywhere on offense. Tyler Warren, Nick Singleton, Drew Aller, defensively, Kevin Winston, Abdul Carter. To me, the question, again, is the defense. Can the defense be more consistent against playoff teams? I've seen enough from the offense. They've played great all season. They played Penn State football. Again, Ohio State. Losing to Ohio State is not a bad thing. I think this team goes 11-1. I think they're the sixth seed in the playoffs. They're a good team. Next up, I have Indiana. They're a team right now. They're 10-0. 
I think they go 11-1. Unfortunately, I do think they lose to Ohio State. But then you come back and play Purdue for senior night, you're going to fucking rock Purdue, especially if you have something to prove coming off of a loss to Ohio State. Listen, 11-1 would be Indiana's best season. They're going to make the playoffs if they finish 11-1. I think, obviously, they're going to lose to Ohio State, but I still think they're going to win a first-round playoff game, which would be incredible for Indiana to go 12-1. and Probably lose in that quarterfinal game, but still 12-2 and with a playoff berth in Kurt Signetti's first year. Listen, that would be incredible. At eight, I have Tennessee. Right now, there's a team there, eight and one. They have three really tough games. Or excuse me, two tough games left. They played number 12 Georgia this week. Um, Georgia team, I already mentioned, they're fighting for their playoff spot right now. I think you win that game, but don't color me shocked if they did lose. You then come back, you take you on UTEP. You're going to fucking whip UTEP. And then you go to Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's a good team. Um, I think you beat Vanderbilt. So I think this is a team they finished 11-1. Um, I legitimately think they can run the table. Offensively, Cooper Mays is leading that offensive line. Dylan Sampson in the backfield has been incredible all season. Defensively, James Pierce on the edge has been a monster for Tennessee. The question is the defense, right? Can it be more consistent against good teams? Georgia this week is going to be a huge test. I think they can take care of business. If they don't, that's when things get dicey. At 9, we have Notre Dame. This is a team they have... They're 8-1 and one right now. They play Virginia this week. Virginia's a good team. We just saw them beat a great pit team. I think Notre Dame wins this game, but it's not a game you can sleepwalk through. Next week, you take on undefeated Army. Army has a lot to can play for. I think Notre Dame's better than Army, but I wouldn't be shocked if Army upset Notre Dame. I legitimately wouldn't. I know I said that about Indiana and Ohio State, but these are two upsets that, like, I just haven't seen enough from Notre Dame and Ohio State to say that they're definitively better this season. I think they're going to do it, and then they go to USC to end the season. Notre Dame's going to roll USC. So to me, a game that you should, you're going to annihilate a team, a name you, game you should win, and then another game you should win, but it's going to be a great team. Um, that ends up finishing 11-1. I mean, this Notre Dame team defensively, Benjamin Morrison, Xavier Watts, Howard Cross, incredible. The question is the offense. It's been the offense all season. Can it be more consistent against great teams? You're going to see that against Army. You're going to see how good they really are. But again, I think this team finishes in, as an seed. I think they make the playoffs for the first time in half decade. Alabama. Uh, I think they go 10-2. and two. They have two losses now. They finished. They actually play Mercer this week. Listen, I'm not calling an upset for Mercer. I'm just not. Because it's an FCS school and it's fucking Alabama. But if there was one FCS school to upset Alabama, it would be Mercer. They control the ball and they turn teams over like this. However, they can't They can't not sleepwalk into this Mercer game. I'll tell you that much right now. Alabama takes on Oklahoma next week in Norman. Another team you can't, you just cannot walk into that game expecting to win. You end the season against the Auburn in the Iron Bowl, you're going to fucking roll, Auburn. So, listen, I still think this team goes 10-2. I mean, this team, again, loaded with star talent. Four of the five offensive linemen are legit first-round prospects. I mean, Parker Brailsford at center, Tyler Booker and Jaden Roberts at left to right guard. You have Caden Proctor at left tackle, Ryan Williams outside, Jalen Milrow at quarterback, defensively Malachi Moore and Deontay Lawson in the secondary and the linebacking core. To me, this team needs to be more consistent defensively against playoff teams. That's going to be the question because the offense, we've seen them score in spurts. But if the defense can step up, Alabama can win a national championship. 11, the only team to jump into this top 12 that wasn't in it last time we did this, Ole Miss, which means you know who's not in it, Georgia, because obviously someone has to be the fifth group of five. This Ole Miss team doesn't play this week. They then go to Florida. They should roll Florida. And then you come back and host Mississippi State in the Egg Bowl to end the season. You should roll Mississippi State. And Mississippi State, the game against them, isn't on Thanksgiving this year. It's on Friday. So you do have an extra day of rest going into that game. And you have an extra week of rest going into the Florida game. To me, we haven't talked too much about this Ole Miss team. Offensively, Jackson Dart, Trey Harris with this guys. Defensively, Walter Nolan. The defense is the question mark. Can it be more consistent against the playoff teams? That was the big uh, flaw in the game against Kentucky. Defense obviously was good, but it, it 20 points to a 3-6 and six Wildcats team. And then 29 against LSU, a team that is 6-3. and three. Listen, that's the difference. If they can play great against great teams, they're going to have a make, make a run. And then at number 12, the fifth group of five power five champion, the Boise State Broncos. I think they go 11-1. They play three games. You host San Jose, or excuse me, you go to San Jose State this week. It's going to be a tough game. San Jose State, if you, they're not a team you can just walk over. You then go to Wyoming next week. You're going to roll Wyoming, and then you come back and host Oregon State for senior night. You're going to roll Oregon State. So if you can get through San Jose State, you should easily get to 11-1. Obviously, Ashton Jainty is the guy for this team. We know how good he is. The question, again, is the defense. Can the defense be more consistent against playoff teams? The only real playoff matchup was against an Oregon. And 37 points, Oregon, again, Oregon's going to win the national championship in my eyes. So it's not something that, you know, is crazy. But that's the question mark. To me, if I look at this bracket, I have it all kind of written out right here. I think Oregon is going to win the national championship. But listen, if and it call me crazy, but if BYU made a run, I wouldn't be shocked. Like, legitimately, I wouldn't be shocked. I've seen this BYU team all season. Not all season, but damn near all season. And they play great football. But at the end of the day, the rankings are exciting. We still have a couple weeks of good football. And there's a lot that can shake out just in games between ranked teams. Um, if you want to see more of this stuff, let me know. Comment down below. If you want to see anything else, comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. Find out if they're right.